please do not buy a pandemic house. Um, what are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is during the pandemic, 2021 especially was the big year for it. Of uh, 2020, late 2020 going through 2021, a lot of people panic bought a house. They had to move. They wanted to get away from where they were at, get out into the countryside and whatever. And there was a lot of price gouging. You heard stories of people paying tens of thousands of dollars over the asking price, which you never do in real estate. Always offer less. Um, that's another story. But people were paying because of fear of missing out. They called FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. And people are panicking. We have to get a house and there's other people that are bidding and, and whatever. And there was also big financial institutions like BlackRock and things that were buying up a lot of housing to drive the prices up. Zillow was also caught um, inflating prices. They were buying houses and turning around and trying to sell them, flipping them, in other words, and charging huge prices. Again, price gouging. And they knew that there was fear. They knew that there were people that were afraid of living in an area where they could be affected by the pandemic, more, more so because of higher density of population. Well, now what's happening is a lot of these people that bought in the height of that housing market bubble, now they're starting to realize, I can't make my payments anymore, especially if they have an adjustable rate mortgage. And it's very important for me to talk about this stuff, so please bear with me. And these people that panic bought now are coming out and they're saying, we have to get rid of our place very soon, very quickly. But we can't make the payments anymore. But the interest rates are now, uh, this last one here in July, the interest rates are now at a 22 year high. All right, They've, it's so it's very expensive to be making mortgage payments, which you shouldn't even be in in the first place. Uh, mortgages are a very bad idea. Mortgage, you become a mortgage-backed security. And basically the bank looks at you as a financial instrument. You're basically a slave to that mortgage. You've taken a death pledge. That's what mortgage means. Whole other issue. But the point is, a lot of those people that bought at the height of the housing market bubble during the pandemic, they are now trying desperately to get rid of their place. And they're coming out with these ridiculous prices that I'm seeing. The price is reflective of what they need to pay off their mortgage but also what they need to be able to have some money to be able to move or do whatever else and uh, you know what you do and this is extremely important please listen to me and take my advice when you look at a house be it on redfin or zillow or whatever look at the tax history look at the sale history um and the tax history will show you what the tax assessed value for the house is and you will be shocked at how much more than the tax assessed value people are trying to ask for their homes. All right. And just to make it clear, this property that I'm walking on right now is our land. We bought this for less than the tax assessed value in 2017. Our office in town that we have, we bought for less than the tax, tax assessed value in 2020. So right about the time that the whole pandemic thing was happening we we settled for our house in uh, town we settled for that in July actually the, my birthday uh, July 7th 2020 is when we settled for it so the pandemic thing was going on at that point in time and we bought it for less than the tax assessed value so don't have somebody come along and say oh you can't get places for tax assessed value has to be a lot more than that well not necessarily it depends on a lot of different things how's the market in that area and whatever else but I say this for a very important reason, because if you overpay for a house, you put yourself into a really bad situation. If you're paying for a house debt free, you have the money to be able to buy a house and you overpay, well, you just wasted a bunch of money. Okay, but if you're going with a mortgage, which like I said, you should not be doing, but if you go with a mortgage and you get into a house uh, because you just can't wait, um, then, you've paid too much and you're eventually going to be upside down in your mortgage. In other words, what you owe on your house to the bank is actually far more than the house is currently worth. And then you have a real problem because now if you want to sell, um, you're going to be taking a major loss. And so you have basically two options when you get into that point. And this is where we're at right now in the housing market. And that is number one, 
you can sell the house because you can't make your payments. You can sell the house and get less than what you owe the bank. Now you have to come up with some other way to pay off that mortgage. You have to be able to, to pay off the mortgage in order to get the title deed and everything to sell to somebody else, unless the bank is willing to move debt over to the other person or some other way. There's all kinds of scheming that they can do. So, but you end up probably with a debt to pay and yet no house to show for it. You know, some level of debt because you had to sell it for cheaper. The second option is to declare bankruptcy. You declare bankruptcy, your credit score is completely destroyed and you won't be able to get another house. Now, you might have to do that to get out of a bad situation and probably just go rent for a while or move in with relatives or something like that. Um, but it's a bad option for a lot of people because most people live on credit. And the idea of having your credit history completely wiped out um, is not a good thing for most people. So, what are we facing here in America? I've, I keep track of the housing market because we're looking um, for a property. I've talked about that in other videos. Just seeing what's out there. I could have bought places already and I'm not doing it because I look at tax assessed value and I look at things like that. But I'm seeing an awful lot of places coming up for sale and uh, purchase history. You know, you look at purchase history and it says purchased in 2021. And you see, and it'll show a lot of times, so they don't always show it, but if you look at it, and if you're interested in a place, certainly request this information, but look and say, okay, when did they buy it? And if they bought it in 2021, what did they pay for it? See, and that's what you look at. And you look at that and you say, wait a second here. They bought this place in 2021. They paid 175,000 for it, just to come up with a number. What's the tax assessed amount? The tax assessed amount is $80,000. So they paid more than twice what the place is even assessed at, what it's even worth. Ew, what are they asking for it? Oh, they're asking $195,000 for it. Well, did they do $20,000 worth of repairs to it or, you know, whatever? Um, no. <laughs> they just lived in it for the last two years or something. Oh, uh, well, how does that work? I saw this really neat caterpillar over here. I'll show this. Little furry little guy. To go from a caterpillar to Luther. <laughs> uh, had to change my battery there. So I'm back. Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, getting back to what I was saying, um, this whole issue of the housing um so we basically are we're seeing this thing now of these people and they're trying to get rid of houses that they paid too much for do not buy a place like that unless you can offer them a very low price and they can somehow take it you say but i really need a house ryan i, I really have to have a house well just wait be patient you have to understand that the financial world it's all cyclical it goes up it goes down Bull markets go up, bear markets come down. Think of the, the horns on a bull, they go up, and a bear, he claws down. Think of it that way. It's what I heard years ago, and I thought that was a good way to say it. Understand that the markets go up, they go down. Um, when everybody's buying, there's a huge demand and low supply, the prices go up. When the supply exceeds the market demand, the prices come down. People don't want it anymore. They aren't, they aren't able to buy it anymore and whatever else. Well, that's what we're going into right now. Um, the supply of housing is starting to go up and the demand is starting to go down because most people don't qualify for mortgages anymore because now the the best level, I think, is seven and a quarter percent or something like that, and that's a lot. Well, if you're subprime, it's going to be more like 10 or so interest rate. Well, that's a lot of money to be spending and especially if you don't have a big down payment or whatever else for a house which again I'm not recommending mortgages for one second you should stay away from mortgages especially if you're saved uh, learn to wait learn to save your money and be debt free um, debt is slavery I mean that's the very definition of 
slavery is you're in debt. Essentially, you've been bought, you're owned by somebody else. Well, if you have a mortgage, you are owned by the bank. It's the way it is. I mean, you've made a death pledge. That's literally what mortgage means, like I said earlier. Uh, please understand that. God does not want you in bondage to lost people. It's very important to stay out of bondage. Um, so, what's going to happen? Well, what I believe is going to happen is, as the American dollar is crashing right now and the BRICS currency is coming and, and whatever else, people say, oh, the dollar is strong yet. The dollar is not strong. The stock market is being propped up by the artificial intelligence stuff right now. Again, documented fact. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of trading going on back and forth and whatever. And, and we'll just let the robots do that for us because that could never go wrong. Yeah, kind of like uh, autonomous vehicles could never crash because we can rely completely on GPS. <laughs> uh, no, not really. But um, so what's going to happen? Well, I think that what we're going to see is as this panic increases, um, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, he came out and said that uh, there will be no interest rate drops, you know, in the near future probably for another year and a half, probably not till 2025. Um, so everybody's hoping for that. Oh, when interest rates come down, then we'll be okay and whatever. Uh, they're not coming down anytime soon. And uh, according to the head of the Federal Reserve. So if that's what your hope is, well, I'll just wait till interest rates come down and they're not coming down for a while. So the American people, um, America is being destroyed right now. And the judgment of God is going to bring this nation down. And what's going to happen is more and more people will find that their home that they purchased out of fear is no longer an option. So they're either going to have to sell it for very cheap and take a major loss and end up still, they'll have no house, but yet debt from the mortgage. That's an option. Or they'll just have to declare bankruptcy, which I think was, is what most people will do which is going to put a lot of Americans into a, a very bad situation because people are losing jobs. There's thousands of job losses. And um, so you're going to have a lot of homeless people. I think the number right now is something like one in 500 Americans is homeless, which is crazy. And it's only going to increase. Why? Because the Bible says you reap what you sow. And this nation went atheistic a long time ago. And all these idiot atheists out there coming out. Oh, there's no God. There's Let's get rid of the Bible. And it's old-fashioned, outdated, you know, morality. Standards of morality and whatever else. Oh, you're going to see the, the fruit of that. Uh, you planted those seeds of uh, foolish atheism. And you're going to be reaping a good crop of crime and violence and war and death. But hey, that stuff's good. Think about that. In atheism, atheistic evolution teaches that the survival of the fittest, the strong survive and whatever. And so, hey, war, crime, death, suffering and things, those are all what helps the species to evolve. So right on schedule there, atheism, good job. You have uh, bad times, you have a nation falling apart, thank an atheist for that because they're the ones who are at fault. You reject God, you say there is no God, well, then a nation that forgets God goes to hell. So enjoy it. It's coming. But um, what we're going to see here in America is we're going to see massive uh, amounts of people defaulting on their debt, saying I can't pay it. Uh, massive bankruptcies, which lead to massive foreclosures, which uh, makes serious liquidity problems for the banks. The banks don't have financial assets that they can borrow or lend out to people anymore. That's what liquidity means. That's just that they need to have lots of money, cash flow, so that they can go and get more people into debt. Real good. But uh, they're going to have massive liquidity problems and a lot more banks are going to collapse. Because now they don't have their little slaves out there making their monthly payments. Making their death pledge payments. And so, massive financial turmoil. As the dollar, you know, they, they uh, raised the debt ceiling, printed $4 trillion. They've already spent over $2 trillion of it. <laughs> You know, what, two months or something? Maybe not even two months. Um, got a woodpecker up here in the tree. 
if I can get around here to show you. Probably can hear that. Let me see if I can get him on video. Stay there. There he is. Can't tell what he is right now. There he goes. Always something to see out here. But, uh, it's not that I get distracted easily or anything. It's just that, uh, I like to showcase God's creation. So, <laughs> but, um, just to finish up, if you are in the market for a house, if you are looking for a place, do not buy right now. Unless you can find a really good deal that's near tax assessed value, do your homework. Do not fall for the realtors saying, never been a better time to buy. No, it's not. Well, it's a matter of uh, inventory. That's why prices are high. No, it's not low inventory. That is not true, at least not entirely. Um, there is. There are people that are still sitting on their homes and and you know i've made the mistake of saying that well it's because people that have their homes and they're not willing to sell right now it's because they have low interest rates you know three percent or lower and so if they sell then they'll have to go out and get a newer get another mortgage which will be a higher interest rate and whatever um uh no that's actually not true i saw that the number is somewhere um right around uh 30 i think lower than 30 percent of americans have real low interest rate mortgages. So that's not true either. And I think of that number, there's some people that actually have their place paid off. So it would actually take the number down to below 20% of the American people have real low interest rates. So, and another thing that they'll say, I've heard realtors say this, and they'll say um, that you can get a mortgage now and then refinance later. Get it with a high interest rate and then you can refinance later. Well, the problem with that is Jerome Powell said probably not till 2025. They won't be lowering interest, interest rates for the foreseeable future. So um, the high payments, well, we can make them for a while. Uh, you're really taking a chance. Um, I wouldn't do it. But uh, there's a lot of def different things that will affect the economy. i have to get one of these wild red raspberry so um, a lot of things will affect the economy and you have to think about that and uh, don't go out and get yourself in all kinds of debt just because you can't wait you learn to be patient and um, you know again the actions of people uh, will affect the market so if you get a bunch of people continuing to buy into an overinflated housing market, well then those same people are keeping it afloat. Whereas if people just say, no, I'm going to be smart with the money that, that God has given me. I'm not buying right now. I'll wait till the prices come down. Uh, that's what you do. Uh, in closing, I'll just tell a little story. I heard that um, back before the Great Depression, there was a guy, he was a farmer, and all the other farmers in his area were getting themselves into all kinds of debt because the, the uh, media was saying that the economy's never been better. And uh, this farmer said, oh, I'm looking at some other signs and I'm seeing some troubling things and, and uh, I'm not going to get into debt. I'm going to save my money and I'm going to deal with having not as good of a farm or not as good of a vehicle or whatever else and um and he you know held to his standards and the stock market crashed a little while later 1929 and um all of his neighbors that had debt large amounts of debt they lost everything and he was able to actually buy up a lot of what they had that they were bragging about um the bible does talk about prospering and that God will give you prosperity. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially if you're married and you have children and things. Um, you should prosper. You should be doing right. And God can give you the wisdom to know when to buy. 
no one to sell. So please take my advice. Please take heed to what I'm saying. Do not buy right now in this inflated market. Very bad time to buy. As you can see the beautiful fireweed here behind me and some goldenrod that's starting to come out here as well. Both very good medicinal teas that you can uh, grow. Or well, not grow, but you can harvest and and uh, turn into into tea. Um, and you say, why do you bring that up? You know, again, well, because you can save money. Learn to save money. Learn to be uh, excited about the things that God has made. Um, there's a lot of things out here that you can study and, and whatever. Um, this tree right here, I don't know if you can see the little berries hanging on it. That's a choke, choke cherry tree. You can make juice out of the choke cherries. You can also dry them and get the, the seed of the choke cherry and you can grind it up and turn it into flour. It's Native Americans did that, um, which we have done. And uh, there's ways that you can save money, ways that you can continue to build up wealth. And then when you want to buy a house or land or whatever else, um, you can invest in that and do it debt free without having to go to the bank and sign your life away. Um, you know, and fall for it because you have to have what you want right away. Uh, that's covetousness, brethren, and the Bible condemns covetousness. It actually calls it idolatry. And so when you get yourself into a lot of debt and you go out there and you, you know, you have this big mortgage to pay off, um, it becomes an idol because it's all you think about. It's everything. You know, I can't do this and I can't do that because I have a mortgage to pay off. I have this big debt, you know, that, that I need to pay, this big mortgage. What can I do, you know, and everything. Can't lay up treasures in heaven uh, because I have the mortgage to pay off. And, you know, just to understand this, too. I know I said I was going to close, but I'll rant on one more point. And that is, basically, if you want to make it very simple, uh, when you get a mortgage, you're basically paying three times the original purchase price. If you go with a 30-year mortgage, it's four times the original purchase price if you go with a 40-year mortgage that they have now which is insane the interest that you're paying on it so if you buy a hundred thousand the house is a hundred thousand dollars that you bought till you're paid off with all the interest that you're paying back to the bank you're basically paying three hundred thousand dollars and that of course will fluctuate depending on the interest rate i get it but that's a pretty terrible investment and you say, but yeah, but, it, but the, in 30 years, the house will be worth a lot more. Uh, you mean the dollar will be devalued a lot more? Uh, think about it. Uh, you can be debt-free. You can live debt-free. And you can do it on one income, which we have done for ever since my wife and I got married back in 2012. So the 11 years of marriage, and um, she's never worked outside the home. And yet we have land and a house. And we have been able to save up money and, and you know, be able to buy a place in the future. Uh, you can do it. So uh, don't fall for the fear of missing out. Don't fall for the lies of the people trying to get you to buy a house right now. Do not buy a house right now. If you're looking at a place, check out tax assessed value and price history. If somebody bought it during the pandemic, 2020 to 2022 in that range, uh, you don't want to buy it. Don't pay off their mortgage. So that is going to be it. Please take heed to my advice and thank you for watching.